Hi, Dr. Pelto here. Uh, I'm going to go over a little bit about the, the self-pay products that we have in the office. Um, this is for 2024. We have a lot of different um, items, and I think this will help the staff and also some of the new doctors coming in to kind of explain what we have. Uh, this is a list of everything, and I'm going to go through these things one at a time uh, here. All the way up to the U-shaped bone pad. So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, the first one is an Achilles wedge. Uh, this is used, you can see here, it has different levels. And this is kind of like an adjustable heel lift for your shoe, but it's used in a walking boot, in a cam boot. You put it in the bottom of the cam boot, it lifts up the heel quite a bit. And this reduces the pull on Achilles. If someone has an Achilles uh, uh, tear, and they want non-surgical treatment. So by lifting up the heel that much, it's gonna allow the two ends of the Achilles to come together. And um, this uh, can be used, it reduces the pull, and it uh, can also be used after surgery as well. This is something that we use for those types of Achilles. And then you slowly reduce the levels uh, that go into there. That's how this uh, Achilles wedge is. Amerigel Care Lotion, uh, this is a, um, we call it Amerigel Blue. It's a lotion that patients can put on their on their feet. And the nice thing is it's um, it's safe to use between the toes, not safe, but safe between to use the toes if you have diabetes. So it's not going to get it very damp between there. It's good for the dark coloration on the legs. Those are called hemosiderin stains in the front of the legs. It's good for that. Venous stasis, dermatitis, it's just a daily uh, a lotion that can be used. Um, I think it's better than some of the other ones that can, you can buy commercially. And uh, it's good for cracked deals. If you have really, really fissured and really, really thick, there's something else that's a little bit better than this one. But this is, uh, this is good for dry skin, cracked heels, and things like that. Okay, I'm called Amerigel Blue. Patients, they can just get it uh, on the way out of the office. Um, Amerigel Red, um, this is used for kind of wounds and ulcers, whether it's the ones that we make when we remove a wart or whether someone has a diabetic ulcer, pressure ulcer, uh, a cut or abrasion. So you can use this on diabetic ulcers that are small. Um, you can also use it if you're gonna be doing like in a, a matrixectomy uh, type of procedure, something where you're gonna be creating a wound and you're gonna want that to heal quicker. Okay, so that's where you use these for matrixectomies uh, in this kit specifically. So in this kit, this is called an Amerigel post-op kit. It has the Amerigel wound dressing, it has a wound wash, which is like a saline wash. It has gauze pads and it has band-aids. And you kind of put those together uh, and you put those on the, on the toe. So you can use this for different things. We specifically use it for matrixectomy and wart removals. It has, a whole, it has enough for the whole post-op period. And it's easier than soaking twice a day, which is um, what, what typically happens. And it's good for wounds. So they can use it anywhere they have a wound. You don't have, just have to use it on the foot. You can use it afterwards anywhere that you want. Uh, Biofreeze, this can either come as a gel, roll on, or a spray. Uh, Biofreeze is used for pain reduction for arthritis and other types of foot pain. It gives a temporary reduction. It has kind of like a menthol uh, 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 smell to it. Patients, they, they like the way it feels, makes it feel better. I think it, it kind of takes away the pain feeling and gives it that cold feeling. So it kind of masks that, that pain for, for a period of time. Uh, this is something that patients can get in the office as well. Uh, body glide, this is used uh, on the foot specifically or in other parts of the body. It use, it's used to reduce friction. So you can put it uh, on the bottom of the foot if there's uh, calluses that are there. You can also use it uh, between your legs, armpits, and other areas of chafing uh, for runners and uh, for other types of athletes. But it can be used also on the bottom of the foot if there's uh, painful rubbing causing these calluses. Uh, Bromitalc is a... Um, a, basically just a talc for, for dampness for people that have hyperhidrosis or dampness in their feet, uh, athlete's foot, have odor problems in their shoes. You can use this type of a talc uh, for that. Uh, Bromi lotion, uh, this is um, used with um, excess uh, perspiration or hyperhidrosis, and it's an antiperspirant uh, lotion that you can put on the skin as well. So uh, a Budin splint, uh, there's a couple of types of uh, toe pads that we use in the office. This is one, it either comes in a single strap or a double strap, and it, what it, it's used to pull down hammer toes. 
So it, it reduces the pressure to the front of the foot because of this padding, but it also kind of relocates that hammer toe that's stuck up. It pulls down the hammer toe so it can fit easier in shoes. So some patients that just can't fit things in shoes, they wear these. It pulls over the toe to make sure it's, but um, yeah, this is something, it goes over the toe, but you want to make sure it's not too tight, especially in patients that are diabetic because you don't want to cut off the circulation. So you have to make sure that these aren't too tight. Uh, these last, you know, depends on how often they wear them, a couple of weeks, uh, and then you can you can do other things. But um, this is kind of a non-surgical approach for bringing those second toes back down and some of these other toes. Uh, Cam Walker sole cover. Uh, this is uh, used for if someone has a walking boot and they want to keep it dry in the rain or the snow. This is something that patients can get as an additional uh, add-on for their walking boot. This is also another add-on that can go both into the walking boot or into the surgical shoe. It's called a peg assist. So this peg assist, um, what it is, it, it has these little pegs that can be pulled out in areas of high pressure, such as uh, ulcer areas. And uh, then it can be put in, it's used to offload them. Here are some instructions. I'll give you guys the slides if you wanna look at those, there's different instructions uh, on their website. Uh, carbon fiber plate. Um, there's different types of carbon fiber plates. There are some that only go to the toe and have the back end. There's some that go totally. These um, fit in the shoe and these used to reduce um, jamming in the joint, especially for people that have hallux limitus. So when they're walking, it makes it nice and rigid in the front so it doesn't bend. Uh, this can be used for any part of the foot that you don't want the foot to bend. Another way of doing this is with a a uh, hard soled shoe, such as like a running shoe or a hiking shoe. Uh, it can be beneficial with these carbon fiber plates or just like a really stable shoe. Uh, these can go in uh, pe pe people's shoes. Um, these are the Caterpillar laces. These are laces that have these little balls on them and these little balls, uh, what they have is um, a, a rubber core that allows the elastic to kind of pull back and forth. And uh, you put these in your shoes, you put them out one end and it keeps like an, um, uh, the same type of tension across it. Uh, it's good if people have like bone spurs on the top of their foot. Uh, it's easier than tying your shoes and, and they say it improves uh, circulation. So there's no numbness on the top of your foot when you're wearing uh, the laces. It doesn't over tighten that area. They're called uh, Caterpillar laces. Cluffy wedge. Um, this is something that goes uh, in the shoe and it goes underneath the big toe joint. Uh, so you have the, the hallux, the big toe, and it actually lifts up the, the toe and it allows the bone to drop down. You put this underneath the big toe. This can either be added to an orthotic or just added to a shoe. And this is made uh, to reduce joint jamming once again for someone that has hallux limitus or reduced uh, range of motion in their big toe joint or functional hallux limitus where it's not moving as well. So this is something else that we have here in the office. This can be either added to an orthotic uh, or it can just give out uh, solely. Uh, these are our CMP socks. I think it's good to show these. Um, these are usually given along with water bottles for those that get orthotics. They can be purchased. They're a good sock. They have a uh, compression in them, so they're very comfortable. They're like a running sock for patients. Uh, Coban, three inch and one inch. So patients are getting these um, to uh, splint, sorry, not sprint. They're used to splint the toes together with a fracture or instability. Um, you can also, when you drain a cyst, you can wrap it around so that cyst doesn't fill back again, fill back up again. And it used for, used for toe bandages in the three inch coban uh, is used after draining a cyst or a hematoma used to reduce swelling as well. Uh, and this can also be uh, used, um, you know, as a dressing for, for patients. And if you have like a, a, a fracture or a a toe that you're wanting to buddy tape two toes together that can help for that, this one inch coban. You have to be careful when we do flexor tenotomies in the office, then we use the one inch coban afterward to keep that toe straight. Once again, you want to be careful with patients that have poor circulation, that it's not on too tight or not on too long. That could cause circulatory problems. Um, corn pads, here's a, an example of a corn pad. It goes right on the side. It can either go on, on the outside of this, would be like for a fifth digit, it can go between the toes, it can be on the top of the toes. They have adhesive on one side. They're used to offload painful corn areas. Um, we usually use them in office with silinocaine if we're doing a porokeratoma. So we're going to put silinocaine inside of this little hole and then put a Band-Aid on it, and that's going to slough off some of the skin. Uh, it can be used for painful calluses uh, between the toes as well to, to space them out. 
Um, here's an example of correct toes. So correct toes are, are to be used to space out uh, the toes. They can be used, they're supposed to be using wish shoes. Um, they, they come in different sizes. They help stabilize the toes and prevent worsening of hammer toes, bunions. They don't, I don't say that they um, reverse them, but they can help prevent the worsening of them. They're made to wear in shoes. For many patients, they wear toe socks along with them. Uh, go slow when you're starting out with them. I usually say one hour per day, very similar to breaking in an orthotic. And it's common to have tendon pain when wearing them, even pain into the front of the legs if you're not used to wearing them because it's going to kind of stretch out everything when you're not used to it. And many times it might be modified. I put some videos here. There are uh, modification instructions of the most common modifications. Uh, and also when they get them, there's a, a QR code that has some interesting modifications. The most common modification is trimming out this little area here on the fifth toe because it pushes the fifth toe over a little too much. Um, crest pads, these are pads that are going underneath the, the toes right here. The, um, and it straps on the third digit. It's, it's made for hammer toes. This can also be added into an orthotic called a crest pad. Um, it's used to support hammer toes to not hit the front of the ground. So basically if you have a really painful callus to the front of the toes, it can help or an ulcer to the front of the toes. Um, make sure it's not too tight once again. And mostly you put this on the third digit. Now, how do you tell um, what side is what? Usually the big side goes towards the big toe. So the big side goes towards the big toe. If you're looking, of, if you're unsure what is right, what is the right one and what's the left one on the, for the foot. Um, custom diabetic inserts. These are uh, inserts that are called multi-density because they have uh, three different densities or two different densities of material. And this difference in density uh, allows less friction on the bottom of the foot. It's used to offload calluses or high pressure areas. It's, it's not used when an ulcer is open. When an ulcer is open, normally people are in a walking boot or a surgical shoe. Uh, you can sometimes do a custom orthotic because it, it does a better job at offloading. These ones, they, they collapse down in the edge. So they're not really made for really big people because they're gonna squish them right down and they're not gonna do anything. I find a, a custom orthotic or something that has a better shell that's made of a harder material works better. Um, these tend to be prescribed with diabetic shoes. Uh, we no longer do diabetic shoes in the office, but uh, we do sometimes order these for, for patients. Uh, digipads, here is an example of some uh, digipads that are used. Uh, these can go on the, on, the, on the toes. So they have this the gel part right here and they have this um, almost like a, 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 a woven sock that goes, so there's a little hole here and you put it on the toe. This can go on any of the toes that have painful calluses. It helps the toes not to rub together where there, where there is pain. Um, even up, this is used with a, the walking boot. You can see someone with a walking boot here and it throws the hips off. This is the even up with the walking boot. Their hips are more aligned and their gait is aligned. It's offered with everyone that's getting a walking boot. We recommend it. Um, the staff are the ones that usually talk about it. It helps to avoid hip and knee issues due to walking with the boot being higher on one side than the other. Uh, another option is to wear a shoe that has a higher heel. So some females, they can wear a high heel, higher heel shoe, but a lot of people don't wanna wear that all the time. So that's called an even up. Uh, Formula 7, uh, this is the, the, the medication that we have in the office that's, um, it's a... Uh, uh, it's anophilate, it's 1%, it's an antifungal solution. It's used uh, for nail fungus. You apply it uh, twice a day and um, it's dispensed only in a doctor's office. So it's, it's the one that we carry. Uh, we don't carry a lot of um, things for nails. We tend to do more like oral medication and things like that. But um, this is if someone doesn't, isn't a candidate or they wanna do something in combination with the oral or laser treatment, they can do this. We're gonna get into some of the pads. There's a lot of different pads that we use. Um, this is called the, the ball of foot cushion. So this is used for metatarsalgia or pain to the ball of the foot. It's used uh, for, pain, for pain for calluses. It doesn't work specifically on calluses. Usually you have to trim the calluses down first if there's callus to trim, and then you can put it on. Uh, if there's a really big uh, callus, you have to take that off first. If there's a prominent bone in the bottom of the foot because of lack of fat pad, this can help as well. So for example, if the patient has, a, has hammer toes that kind of go up and there's a prominent bone there, or you can feel just the bone instead of the, the fat that's usually on there, you can use these. These can also be added to an orthotic, uh, these um, metatarsal pads, uh, that's what they're called, ball of foot pads. There's also arch pads. So these can be used if someone has a painful arch, they have high arch, uh, weak arches, low arches, things like that. They can be, these are reusable. That's the benefit of this pad as well. These are re reusable. What you do is you wear them and then you pull them off at night 
And then every few days, it's going to get uh, stuff stuck on them. So you wash them with soap and water and the stickiness will come back to them. All these gel pads are the same way. Um, they, they work well. Once again, this tries to lift up the arch a little bit. Once again, it can be done in orthotic as well. These are all like temporary things that you could try before you would make someone an orthotic. Uh, same thing, uh, same idea, uh, but this is called the gel U pad. This is a U because the area of pain you would uh, cut out right here. So if there's a painful callus, this would go all around that callus. You would trim the callus or the porocaritoma off. You could also use it to offload an ulcer, but usually an ulcer or a, you maybe use it for a pre-ulcerative callus. That means a callus that could be an ulcer in the future. Usually for an ulcer, you're going to offload them in a surgical shoe um, or a walking boot. Uh, heel cups, these are used for cracked heels uh, along with some of the, the heel sleep heel socks and urea creams. They can also be used for, for painful heels to offload, to change the, the pressure point. So a, a heel that is lacking some fat on the bottom. So it's a, a fat pad atrophy or just a, a painful heel that you want to try to squish it. Some patients do well with this. Some kids with sievers do well. Some kids with, uh, some people with plantar fasciitis do well with these just to change the pressure point of, uh, of the, of the heel. And it kind of puts the pressure more to the sides than in the center. Uh, there are small and, and large sizes. And um, the, the way to remember it is there's a sticker on them and you always step on the sticker. So that when you tell patients, so they know what side to put up, uh, that the bottom part is the one where the sticker is. Okay, that's the easiest way to re remind patients. Adjustable heel lift, similar to what we looked at with the Achilles tendon, there is the adjustable heel lift uh, as well. And uh, this has three different levels you can see here. And you take these out you can leave it in for a week or a month. It depends on how long you're going to be using it. Uh, it's, it's used uh, to reduce some of the pull on the Achilles. And um, there's three levels used for Aquinas and Achilles tendon. You gradually reduce the height every two to four weeks. And it can also be used for a limb length discrepancy. So if someone has a, a longer limb, you can put this in one of the shoes and not the other shoe. It's called an adjustable heel lift. This is a more expensive version of this one. This is a PPT lift. It's just instead of there's three levels right here. You can see this one only has one of those levels, and it's uh, it's PPT, so it 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 has a cushion to it, so it's going to kind of bottom out. Can be used for a limb length discrepancy, and it's uh it's a quarter inch, so it's, it's smaller. Uh, heel so smooth. These are heel socks that we use for patients that have really bad cracked heels. We talked before about the Amerigel Blue. You can use Amerigel Blue, but this really works better if there's bad cracks. So used for cracked heels, use this in conjunction with urea cream. So you can either put these on by themselves at night and then in the morning put on the urea cream. You can put them on together. If you put them on together though, it makes it dirtier because of the, the cream that goes with the sock, but it's really good for dried cracked heels. The heel so smooth, heel sleeves. This is the uh, other aspect to that. It's called the Kara combo. It's a pumice or a pummy bar uh, along with the Kara 42. This can be used along with this other sock. Okay. It, the, the cream uh, is used to reduce callusing as well as uh, cracks or fissures into the heels. It can be used with the pumice uh, one to two times a week after showering. So you use the pumice usually in the shower and the pummy bar does not cause friction as a pumice stone does. Um, be careful though, if you use it all the time, it's going to cause skin sloughing. So the skin's going to be sloughing off. The patients might come in wondering why their skin is kind of sloughing off. This is the cream by itself. So there's a combo. There's a little discount if they do it with the combo. This is the cream uh, just itself. Okay. Uh, here's Kara Nail Gel. So Kara Nail Gel is used for thick toenails. It makes it easier for them to trim. It's made of tea tree oil, menthol, and um, it just makes it easier for it to trim it. I don't, I don't say it, it um, clears the fungus, but it just makes it easier to trim for some patients that have really thick nails that have a hard time um, trimming them on their own. That's the Kara Nail Gel. Um, Kara Flex, this is an example uh, of how to do Kara Flex. You take a, a bad looking nail, you trim it all the way back and you make a kind of a fake nail on top of it. Um, there's different steps to it. It usually stays on about three months. Uh, for the return application, there's usually a reduced price for the second application. And the kit, the patients can bring it back themselves, usually does two to three nails. Uh, most patients come in the spring and the summer for this, and they can apply nail polish and use acetone remover afterwards. So it's a real simple thing here. Um, there's an example of, of how to do this with this video. If you want to uh, watch this video, you can, you can do this. This kind of explains how to do it. You have the nail that you trim off 
uh, all the way back to where it's attached. Uh, the first part you do is you there's a, a bonding agent. You apply the bonding agent and then use a little light. Uh, and then you do the resin. You do a first application uh, a little bit, and then you put it underneath the light uh, for usually 30 seconds initially just to harden it. Then you do another second step as well to make it look pretty. And then afterwards, you grind it down to make it look more like a, a normal nail. So and then you then you put the light on again. So that's how you do it in the office. Uh, there's a couple of different types of lights that you can use. Uh, we have two different lights. One is the carry flex light and the other one is for the Onifix. So they're kind of two different lights that we use for this. Uh, KT taping is used to reduce uh, strain on tissue. Uh, what it does is it actually lifts up the skin to allow increased blood flow uh, to the area and it reduces muscle soreness and provides uh, flexible support. So we can use this for the Achilles, for the plantar fascia. We do have KT tape in the office uh, for, for patients. Uh, LEMS, these are shoes that we sell. We sell these, we have usually the basic colors, but they can order them through it, through us. No one else really has them. So we're one of the distributors. It's a zero drop shoe. It has an anatomic toe box. It's lightweight. It's good if a patient likes to go barefoot and it can be worn with some orthotics, uh, but many uh, do not wear it with orthotics. And we, uh, sorry, we carry them in the office. There are um, different types of shoes that we recommend. Usually it's ultras, topos, and lems. They're more of an anatomic shoe. Um, this is a, a, like that other pad that we saw before, the gel pad. This is a metatarsal pad. It's a PPT. Uh, the same thing as that other lift that we saw. And it it uh, used to offload painful metatarsal region. It, this is applied directly to the shoe though. The other one was applied to the foot itself and it's stuck on. This one sticks to the liner. And once again, it can be incorporated in an orthotic. If someone has an orthotic or you want to test it out on top of their current orthotic, um, and you have to determine what's right and left. This is always a struggle for the staff. This is an example of the right one. Once again, the bigger part goes on the medial side or towards the big toe. That's how you can tell. The larger part indicates the, the medial part or the part that goes towards the arch region is the bigger part for you when you're looking at it, the right or left. This is an example of a metatarsal pad that can be applied uh, similar to the gel one that we saw before, but this is a felt one. Uh, and this is attached to the foot. I find the gel ones just work better because they can be reused. Uh, this is more of like a temporary thing. Uh, Michael Mist is uh, used to spray uh, our shoes, the shoes of the patients. It's less harmful than Lysol. You spray it in the shoe and you put them in a plastic bag overnight. And we tend to use this in conjunction with the shoe sterilizer for patients that are dealing with athlete's foot or nail fungus. It's called Michael Mist. Um, splay or Naboso Splay. These are similar to the correct toes, but they're one size fits all and uh, they don't have different sizes. Uh, they're used to wear with anatomic shoes. They're less expensive than the correct toes. And here's some links to some webinars if you wanna learn more about them. Uh, Northwest dressettes. These are some dress orthotics that we do for patients. Let's say they wear a dress shoe or they wear flats. This is an example of one that you can put in their flat, flats. This is the one for, there's high heel one as well. They take up less room than normal orthotics and they can be used for under three inches, which is this one, or over three inches, which is this higher one. If you want more information from Northwest, you can click the link that's there as well. Um, these are prefabricated children's orthotics that we have. They come based on colors and you hold them up to the arch of the foot. And um, they, have, uh, they have a deep UCBL type of device for, for flexible fat, flat foot. Um, once they don't fit, then we get the patients into a custom device. We see the patients back usually yearly to make sure they're fitting well, and then they can get the next size up. And usually it's every year to year and a half, they're going to go up a size. When the arch is, is hitting too far forward, it's time to get a larger size. So when this arch right here is fitting, hitting too far forward in their foot, they'll be in for a new pair. Uh, but I, want, I always tell patients, they don't create an old arch. I tell the parents that they just really give uh, stability for the heel region and they help the, the foot to function a little bit better. This is an example of some of the orthotics. Now we have two different brands that we normally use in the office. One's called Forward Motion and one is called a Northwest. Um, for all the orthotics, I tend to say that they last about five years. This one's a little bit less expensive than the Northwest one. The Northwest, some of them can be a larger device um, and we use a foot scanner. Here's a link to their website. This is an example of one uh, from Forward Motion. A lot of times we use a full length one. Uh, this, this is their prescribing uh, paper. I just wanted to go over this a little bit um, uh, because when we're filling this out uh, for patients, we want to know if we're going to do a functional orthotic, an athletic address, an accommodative. This is like with, for the diabetic ones, um, the accommodative similar. 
And then there's some children's, this UCBL and some of these gate plates. So this is all in the app that we have now, but this is just an example to kind of explain things. There's different shells that we, we might want to do, like a graphite is a typical one or polypropylene, which are common uh, ones that we do. Then we put the arch height um, uh, that we want low, medium, high, or total contact if it's a very high arched foot. Uh, flanges, which are little extensions that can go both on the inside, medial, and lateral. A mild medial is good. A big whole medial might be really hard uh, for someone to fit. Um, there's a lateral, uh, a deep heel cup. Um, then you want to talk about the heel cup. Usually we do the, the deeper the heel cup, the more stability the foot gets. Um, the orthotic width, most are normal, but if there's a really wide foot, we'll do a wide. Uh, and then there's different postings that you do. You might want to do um, extrinsic posting. Most of the time we do intrinsic posting, uh, unless it's a very flat foot. Um, and there's different top covers, uh, EVA, vinyl, leather, neoprene is one for like athletes, diabetic micropore is a cushionier one. Um, and you can see these all on their website. And then the top cover length, um, you can either go just the shell only, like this previous picture I showed you. This is the shell only. You can go to the sulcus, which is underneath the toes, or you can go full length. And there's different types of padding that you can put in there. And then these are different accommodations, similar to the accommodations we talked about before, uh, uh, that we can put on the on the shoes or on the foot. There's metatarsal pads, um, arch pads, first ray cutout to help the first ray move better. Morn's extension um, to to um, not allow the big toe joint to move as much. Um, for metatarsal cutouts for painful calluses, arch reinforcements, uh, amputee sponge fills, dancers pads. Those are to offload the different areas of the foot. So that's that's an example of the forward motion. Here's an example of the Northwest orthotics. Um, these, once again, usually last five years. They're a little bit more expensive than forward motion. Uh, the carbon fiber is very comfortable for our patients, takes up less space in the shoe. They have a very good posterior tibial tendon or very for flat feet is a very good device. Here's a, a link to, to those ones. They have a little bit um, a more of a complex um, prescription, but they do have these, um, you can select like what they're being used for. Like if they have flat foot or plantar fasciitis, you can just pick this and it'll put in all the other things for you, which makes it a little bit easier if you want to use one of their setups. Um, they have one very good super glass one for posterior tibial tendon or flat foot. That, that's a very good one for our patients. They have dress ones and you can pick once again, the type of um, foundation, the type of top cover, the types of cushions, which is very similar to the other ones. Um, here are the activity, like kind of what's included in the orthotics. And here's all the different pads that you can add to that. We'll do a different one later on that's going to explain a little bit more about that. Um, we have an a offer with a second pair of orthotics within six months, a $200 off. This goes in with every orthotic that patients get and then put it in there. So they can use this for dress shoes, gym shoes, soccer cleats, golf shoes, ski boots, cycling boots. So it's something that the staff should offer to the patients. Um, you extend this for six months, helps increase compliance and, and improvement. And uh, it's good for, for a lot of our patients. So you can just be offering that to them as well. Um, there's some orthotic add-ons I want to go over. Um, there is refurbishing. So many times the top cover gets worn out and it usually is about a hundred, um, hundred dollars. Um, and then, but it's less than the, the price of a new pair. Um, the orthotics are protected against cracking. So usually they do a new pair for free if it cracks. But um, if they just need to refurbish, they drop it off. And uh, many times we'll scan them for a new pair, get them a new pair, and then refurbish the old pair. So they'll have a second pair. Um, there's a rush charge if they want quicker production, like if they're traveling or going to school. There's an orthotic scan only. And this is for, for example, pediatrics. If they outgrow their orthotics, uh, they, they don't have to pay for the whole device. They just a scanning fee. And then there's an orthotics or shoes shipped to the home. So this is usually for students or people living in another state, uh, another part of the year. So you can ship things to them. There's a little add-on fee for that. Uh, this is a plantar fasciitis sleeve. This is a compression sleeve that can be used uh, around the foot. Um, this is the proper way of putting it on. It comes in different colors. It can be used for plantar fasciitis. It's called the plantar fasciitis sleeve, but it can be used for anything where there's swelling. You can use it for fra fractures, uh, for tendinitis, for swelling, and you can even use it to transition after they're in an ankle brace for an ankle sprain. Um, here is an orb uh, massage ball. So this is a massage ball that's used uh, to reduce soft tissue tightness, um, helps improve soft tissue recovery for the quads, IT band, and hamstrings. Um, here's an example of a ProTech Achilles sleeve. This has some, these bladders here of, of uh, air 
or cushion that help reduce by putting compression on the Achilles. It's for non-insertional Achilles pain to make it feel better. This is an example of a foam roller. There's a couple of different types of foam rollers. This is a, a, a contoured foam roller that penetrates a little bit deeper. You can use it for the calves, for the quads, the IT, hamstrings, things like that. This is one that's a little bit easier to travel with because it has a hollow roll in it, hollow hole. And you can, when you travel, you can put your clothes in there and it's easier to fit um, in there. But it, same thing as the other one. This is a, just a mini ball, but this is more of the foot or different areas of the calf that promotes flexibility. And this one you can heat up. So it has some it kind of softens the soft tissue as you do it. Um, here's an example of the pummy bar that we use, similar type where it buffs off as you're using it, it will disintegrate. Okay, you use this along with the cream. Um, it doesn't really cause friction. You use it in the shower to remove any of the dry callus skin. Once again, if patient's a diabetic, you have to be careful not to cause any sores if they scrub things too much. Um, here's an example of the shoes app. This is the one that we're using currently. Um, you use it for 15 minutes and it's usually done with nail fungus treatments like Lunula or Lamisil. It can help uh, kill the fungus and bacteria that cause athlete's foot, fungal nails, uh, foot and shoe odor, and, and diabetic infections. So here's some example. You can go to their website to look more about it, but it's helpful for, for patients uh, for their shoes versus buying new shoes all the time. Uh, this is an example of a shower bag. This can be used for both a cast and also if patients have surgery and they have sutures or, or stitches. Um, my patient, our patients usually leave before they have surgery with these. And I recommend they try those on before surgery to make sure that there's no leaks. Uh, it doesn't leak in. Uh, this is an example of a toe alignment splint. We don't use this that often, but occasionally with a bunion or a hammer toe, we want to hold things in place. And these are the little straps where you can kind of pull the toe down and, and stabilize it to this Velcro piece right here. So it can, it can stabilize a bunion or a hammer toe or a tailor's bunion. Uh, here are some toe caps. These are gel toe caps. Uh, these are good for the big toe and the smaller toes. They can be helpful for painful calluses on the tops or the tips of the toes, and they can reduce pressure. Uh, they're not directly supposed to be used on ulcers, but they're usually used to prevent the ulcers from happening. Uh, another type is a silicone tip, once again, for a painful callus or an ulcer region that you want to, a pre-ulcerative callus that you want to reduce that rubbing from. Uh, toe spreader, this is used uh, to spread between the first and second toe. The biggest problem with this is it falls out all the time. So you have to put socks on and try to find it if you lose it, but it works uh, quite well just to space out. Some people feel better if you just space out the bunion from the second toe, it just pushes it over a little bit, helps realign the joint and makes some people feel better. Uh, this is a, a gel, this is a U-pad that's made out of uh, felt. Uh, the, we have, I think we have the felted ones or foam ones in the office and you stick it to the bottom. Um, instead of felt, it's foam. We have this felt and it sticks on the bottom of the foot and it offloads areas the, similar to the gel one, but this is just made out of a different fabric. It usually has adhesive on one side and it can be placed also on the, on the sock line or in the shoe for the patients. Um, so the next one we're gonna go over is uh, durable medical equipment, but we're gonna stop this one for now.